Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have Diary of a, Diary of a Wimpy Kid again. Well, uh, okay, two days ago we did Diary of a Wimpy Kid Dog Days, which is the third film in the, in the live action series from 20th Century Fox. But hey, since they uh, acquired, since Disney acquired Fox a couple of years ago, well, of course they brought over all the properties, and they also decided to make a live, uh, oh, sorry, an animated reboot, which. Uh, pretty much redoes the entire first film, but animated, using the style of the creator, Jeff Kinney. I figured that out since, since the last two days, that Jeff Kinney, yes, is is the creator of Wimpy Kid. I'm sorry, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Uh, and and it, the, the, the difference with this is, beyond the animation, is the fact that I do it in two-thirds of the time. So this is, this is from 2021, and it runs a whole 58 minutes. That's why it, it listed on my... Th and my thing, it was a short. So, uh, yeah, it's... What are you going to do? It's uh, it's it's <laughs> it's actually uh, all the highlights of the uh, live-action film, of course, which were taken from the books. Uh, it shows, you know, uh, Greg's first time going to junior high, or middle school, sorry, middle school, and uh, him and Rowley, his best friend, who is a bit more regressed, uh, emotionally than he is and doesn't have the benefit or detriment of a, a big brother to tell him all the horrible scary things that will or could happen to them in in uh, middle school as, as compared to elementary school. Rowley is still very much just a, a young kid in his mind. He's he's still he's he loves teen pop stars, he loves playing rather than hanging out. Uh, he loves his toys and, and everything else versus all the grown-up things that a middle school kid should be enjoying. And so it's, it's uh, Greg is very much uh, set on being accepted, but at any cost, uh, being allowed to have a seat at lunchtime, uh, making sure that, sorry, there was a piece of hair, uh, <laughs> being that there's no, uh, uh, bullies to pick on them or uh it just he wants to be at the top of the stack as compared to the very bottom which he knows who's at the bottom and it's a kid who pretty much worships him and uh and again if you've seen the live action original film or read the books you'll be very familiar with all these scenes of course there's also the cheese touch which is a humongous part of this story and uh but yeah it it cuts it there's all well also the uh, the bully is chasing after them out of out of the, on halloween all these different uh sort of mini stories vignettes all put put together to make up this uh first installment in the series it admittedly just like the original one it makes greg not always sympathetic because he spends a lot of time uh lying and manipulating his friends well, his friend, his one good friend, uh, he ends up manipulating him, uh, even breaking his arm and thinking, oh, well, we can use this because kids with broken arms with casts, we can, you know, take advantage of that. We could be very popular. He's thinking we, at no sacrifice to his, his own, even though he was a perp the reason why Rally has a broken arm, uh, Rally does become popular, but Greg, not so much. So, yeah, it, uh, there's a bit of a struggle between them, and, and it's, again, it feels very familiar. We watched the first, ep first film in the series, like, in March. So it's been a little over a month since we saw uh, the first one. And, of course, it's still fresh because <laughs> just saw the third one two days ago. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, if you love this kind of an animation, it's a 3D animation. Uh, it very much, like I said, plays off the, the style that the creator... Uh, has drawn into his books and gives the characters very much that character. And also, in this sense, uh, because it's animated, it doesn't age. So you don't have to worry about pumping out sequels every year like they did with the other films to make sure you capture the same cast all <laughs> before they all grow up and become, you know, middle-aged, you know, kids playing ninth graders at some point. So we don't want that. But here with animation, they'll just... <laughs> As the kids age out of their roles, guess what? They'll just replace them with somebody who sounds close enough. And that's the way it works. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm not going to pick tomorrow because tomorrow is May the 4th. And for those of us who uh, who uh, observe that day as a holy day, 
as uh, May the 4th be with you, we're going to be watching something Star Wars related. Now, so far, I know that they are doing Star Wars, uh, they're, well, they're doing Disney Gallery, The Book of Boba Fett, which is a documentary behind the scenes of The Book of Boba Fett series that came out in December. Uh, something tells me, I mean, last year it was a whole lot more than that. They released a bunch of vintage stuff and a whole lot of crazy, just like the Ewok movies and uh, the animated feature that, that had Boba Fett, that introduced Boba Fett all those years ago. So they had a lot of stuff they released, and there's still a chance there's a surprise uh, coming. I, I've kind of stayed away from it, so it's, you know, but uh, if I'm, if I'm going to watch it, uh, well, if, 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 if none of that does show up, we're still watching Disney Gallery, the book of Boba Fett. So we'll get to see a little documentary behind the scenes of the, how they made it just a few miles from here. So I wish I could make a documentary, documentary myself by coming, going there, but eh, not everybody has access. I'm not special. Uh, so yeah. Um, anyway, yes, tomorrow, Disney Gallery, The Book of Boba Fett on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, unless there's something else more. Maybe we'll talk about that, or maybe I'll switch it out. I have no idea, but we'll see. Anyway, see you then.